crafty friends it's Sharon Luska here and this is my channel my crafty greetings I'd like to wel welcome you and take a moment to thank Courtney Kriebler Mary Planko and Jen from Scrapbina Creations for organizing this wonderful encouragement card hop um, I'm so excited to be participating and I want to give you all a little bit of encouragement I'm going to be offering uh, two gift cards for one for $25 and one for $50 to any uh, e online store of your choice and here's how you do it. First, I'd love for you to subscribe. If you subscribe and watch the video, leave a comment. Tell me which was your favorite card. If you want more chances to win, watch more of my videos. Tell me on each video which card was your favorite. Those will count as extra chances for you to win. I will give you the rest of the details about winning at the end of this video. Good luck! Okay, here we go with card number one. I've chosen a page that I normally wouldn't pick. That's kind of the whole point of this blog hop is I'm encouraging to use up pages that maybe would stay stuck in your stash. This is one that would stay stuck in mine. So what I'm doing here is cutting out a bunch of these butterflies. Since they're loosely drawn, I'm not stressing myself out by cutting them out in as detailed a fashion as I normally would. I'm just kind of speeding through them and they're going to look just fine. The next thing that I do is take a little bit of acrylic paint, it doesn't have to be expensive acrylic paint, and I'm using a dotting tool, or some of you may have one that you use for a scoring tool, just remember to wash it off, and I'm picking up that paint and dotting it on the areas that I want to accentuate on the butterflies. This is going to add some extra visual detail when you see the card at the end. I'm also adding detail to the butterflies that are already on the back panel of my card. Now I'm using a 3D paint that I picked up at the dollar store. It's maybe the equivalent of Stickles or maybe Nouveau Drops. And I'm using that to add black detail to the other parts of my butterflies, including the bodies of the monarch. I've already stamped out my sentiment in Versamark black ink and adhered it to a black backing panel. I'm putting my card panel onto my card base and I've already got some 3D foam tape back behind my sentiment and it says spread your wings and fly it's from a stamp set an old one from Michaels you may have this one in your stash I'm arranging my butterflies here and I'm just gluing them down with some aliens craft tacky glue you'll have to watch Mary's video about glue it's very informative and I think she's made me decide that I'm gonna buy some art glitter glue so this is my finished card and I'm just going to add a bunch of bling to it of course who wouldn't want some bling and then that also just helps balance out some of my blank spaces here. And here's a little better look on how that card turned out. And now we're on to card number two. I've chosen one of these six by six cut aparts and I wanted to show you how I adhere these to my five by seven cards. I've also taken the opportunity to black out one of these sentiments. You're not always stuck with the sentiments that they've printed. Once you've disguised them with a little bit of magic marker, then you can easily heat emboss something over top and they will be barely visible. The other thing you could do is actually cut out a piece of paper and put it as a banner over top of the text that you're trying to hide. Make today suited just fine with the sentiment that I wanted to make. Make today awesome, hey, why not? So now I've taken a piece of discarded plastic and put my stamp on it. This way I can see through to line it up with the sentiment that I'm trying to join it with. And when I pick it up, it's not going to stick to the paper that I'm trying to stamp on. I'm using some Versamark ink and I'll be embossing that with some gold embossing powder by Ranger that I had in my stash. I also use the awesome stamp from a Kelly Create stamp set from American Crafts. I've cut myself a piece of vellum that's five by seven and I'm going to be adhering that to my card base. I also cut myself a circle out of this piece since it's going to be hidden by my sentiment as I'm using it in the structure of the sentiment itself. I cut this six by six piece down the center and I'm just going to be overlapping the two pieces as I reassemble them and make them five inches wide. So here's where I got into some trouble. In true crafty chicanery, I went ahead to try and glue this together and as I'm lining it up, things just didn't line up properly and it stuck anyways and boy did it stick. So I had to rip it apart and I decided, well, I'll line it up on the heavier cardstock first and then try and get my sentiment piece on top. 
Vellum is always the toughest thing to adhere is the base piece, and I always seem to forget that I should adhere it to something else first and then put the other piece of cardstock over top. Also, if my piece is big enough and I'm using foam tape strips, I like to adhere one in the middle first and then sneak back behind and pull out all the protective strips from the rest of them. This helps with my alignment and makes it a little easier to stick down. So here we go with card number three. I picked myself out another one of those six by six card bases. It says free spirit, and I never know what to use something like that for, so I'm just gonna cut this free off. Now I'm taking two seconds here to make myself a little picker tool. You can make one of these yourselves at home. All you need is one of those really cheap pens. Usually you can get them in a big box from business things or from back to school. And then a Q-tip. I prefer the ones with the plastic barrel on them. Rip off the fuzzy little end, cut off the opposite end, and then feed this through the nib that's at the base of the pen. Slide it back into your pen barrel, and voila, cheapo picker. Don't forget you're gonna need some sort of two-way glue, like a zig glue. So I'm gonna take this piece, and you can see I've taken and separated off the side that we're not going to use, and I'm gonna layer that up on a piece of white cardstock that will actually match my white cardstock base. I also have added some glossy accents, which you can see shimmering away in the background there, to the vase and some of the details on the leaves and the flowers. I'm also adding a piece of packing foam here to the back of my sentiment, just to give it a little bit of dimension, and I'm going to adhere my base. Oop, that's a lie. I'm going to put some tape on my base and I'm going to add some ribbons. So I'm using my uh, sentiment piece here to put some ribbon on, or at least try to put some ribbon on. That stuff's slipperier and all get out. And I wanted to put three pieces and line them up so that they hit approximately where my sentiment's going to be. Once I've gotten one down, I then take out my detail piece and start lining them up with the dots on the paper. If you don't have dots, you may want to give yourself a couple little pencil marks just to give yourself an even spacing and to line them up appropriately. I'm going to add some extra tape to that, put some more tape on the background, and get this adhered to my card base. I'm going to line those little babies up a bit more, and now I'm going to add some ATG to the back of my central image. Get that in place here, and now I'm going to add my sentiment. This is from Adina Wakely stamp set by Ranger, and it's called Handwritten Sentiments. I stamped it on a piece of white paper that matches the same white paper that I used for the layering, and now I'm going to add a bunch of these beautiful sequins from Nuvo. I'm gonna stick them down with my homemade picker and a little bit of Zig glue pen, and that'll get the job done. Okay, here we go with card number four. I'm getting a little less nervous now, and this is a simpler card. This is a couple of cut-aparts, one that I've cut out with a circle, specifically the BU sentiment, and I've backed that with a circle of Nina Solar White 80-pound cardstock. I've also cut out a layering piece for my Shine Bright sentiment cut-apart here, and I'm adding that to the back, as well as a layer of my packing foam sheets, which you can cut apart very, very easily just by bending them over and giving them a snip and putting a little bit of ATG on the back. Well, obviously you can say I tried to put some ATG on and had a little bit of fun in the process. I'm adhering a piece of this ombre paper to my five by seven card base. And I also have cut myself a strip of the gold foiled black paper, dotted paper, which I'm adhering down. And I have my cut apart there and my extra sentiment. I tried to stick a little bit of that uh, foam on the back and you can see, man, I got this sucker crooked. So I just peeled it off and stuck it under where it's supposed to be. And hopefully this will give me a chance to line that up properly and legibly. And it did. And now I'm gonna take some glossy accents and I'm just gonna highlight the bright on the front of the sentiment here as well as BU. And um, unfortunately at home in Canada, because we're in Myrtle Beach right now, I have a little bit better tools. I actually have a tip on my glossy accents that gives me a really fine detail and allows me to go over letters a lot more easily. Something I do recommend. But you know, honestly, this is like loosely written and 
I don't think anybody's gonna care you know they're such pretty cards and I think it's so nice to get something like this from a friend okay here's card number five this is one of those big daunting sheets that I always look at and think what the heck are we supposed to do with that and I know they say they're great for scrapbooking but if you're gonna put pictures on there where do you put the pictures I don't know anyways Dream Big seemed like a sentiment that was very encouraging, so I thought I'm definitely gonna use that. And then I went ahead and cut out all these details um, so that I could use them on the card. And uh, this butterfly had uh, the petal of the flower on it, and what I did was just fold it in half and matched it up. I think I did a pretty good job. And I'm using these Sculpey tools uh, just to help um, give these pieces dimension. Now you could also use cake decorating tools. I don't know if they have cake decorating tools at the dollar store yet, but that's the first place I'd check. If not, um, try Home Goods and uh, see if they've got something there. Or if you're in Canada, Home Sense, which is what we have. Um, but cake decorating tools work fabulously, or you can get the Sculpey ones at Michael's. And it gives you a few different balls that you can use to give some dimension to these pieces. And I find that it gives them just a whole lot more interest than just your flat pieces. And if you look at some of the cards at the grocery store, uh, you'll see this is something that they do obviously with a machine not hand done like we do but then they don't sell hand done cards like we have so um, just pick out some of your darker spots on your flowers and you know give it a try the worst thing that can happen is you add some dimension where you don't want it and then poke it around a bit more and see if you can get the dimension where you do want it Leaves are pretty simple though. I pop out the edges and then I always go after the um, central veining and use the finer tool just to give them a little bit of an indent. Honestly, as card makers, you know, the most important thing is to encourage each other and really just to try. The worst thing that can happen is that you cut some things apart and maybe you don't like them. Throw them in a box, you might pull them out later and find that there's something actually cool. I have many times tried to make something and didn't go my way, put it in a little baggie and set it aside in a filing system that I have and later I came back to it and um, I don't know whether Mojo was just on my side but, uh, or I guess it's Muse, not Mojo, but anyways, whatever was on my side, something was on my side and I was able to put a card apart. Um, I'm just going to cut out this G here because it's hanging over top of the sentiment that uh, I wanted to use and uh, I thought dream big go forth and conquer was pretty encouraging eh, what do you think yeah that comes from a Hampton Arts uh, stamp set there that I just put up in the corner and um, I'm going to add a little bit of gold detailing here to the edges that's just some gold foil paper that I picked up at the dollar store um, look back in the area um, I think they have like office supplies and things like that usually around Christmas time they'll have packs of foiled paper um, I think for making signs or whatever so I'm just gonna back this uh, it's on Nina solar white and uh, I've stamped it with first mark black ink and um, backed it with a little bit of black paper and I'm gonna line this up on my 5x7 card base just flat and use a little bit of zig glue pen to make sure that that G doesn't go flapping around and I'm just gonna start uh, adding a few strips this is the only one that has a foam strip behind it but um, I take a few little strips of two-sided tape and wad them up or fold them up and start to place all my flowers around and uh, basically I just hold them in place and give them a little bit of a dry fit, try them out first and see if they work. And once they work, I give them a little poke down and stick them in place. Uh, once you've done all the fussy cutting on all of the, I don't know, what do you call these drawings or, you know, images, I guess they're images. <laughs> once you take all the images and you get those all cut out, um, you know, you can get them all plumped up and make an arrangement. And then I've also taken some of this 3D uh, black a nouveau like product and I'm just going over some of the black details on the butterfly and the flowers and adding some um, stuff in here adding some detail in here um, just to make things stand out and specifically on the body I'm just going over everywhere that's black and doing it very loosely as this is very um, sketchy loose style 
images that are in this pad which is nice because when you pick something that's you know very perfect and very specific you need to be a little more specific in the way you do things but if you pick out something that's a little more loosely drawn um, you know you don't have to put yourself through so much stress making things perfect perfect I'm taking my glossy accents and just going over the white to make it stand out a bit and then I'm also going to add that to a few of the flowers and anywhere that you have um, any type of dark printing on paper and you go over it with uh, glossy accents it's actually going to make it look darker so you can add some more dimension to um, any of your projects by doing this so things like leaf veins or you know any of the dimension deeper inside flowers um, you know you can it's a great technique for adding adding to that and again you know take your glossy accents and just go nuts or take a piece of paper that you don't necessarily like and give it a try okay we're already on to card number six and I have to say this one the video I don't know what happened sometimes it's hard to pay attention when you're recording whether you push the button didn't push the button whatever but I took a card panel here and a piece of vellum I edged the vellum with uh, some thin gold tape that I had and um, I'm just had put some um, packing foam behind the vellum to pop it up and I also put some packing foam behind my Nina solar white strip that has the stamp done in Versamark black ink and it says you shine brightly a very encouraging sentiment and this is uh, one of the cut aparts that I added on as well as putting glossy accents over the butterflies sorry that was so short but still get the point card number seven one of the nice things that I love about this packing foam is you can lay it down over top of a fussy cut image, trace out where you want to cut it, and then drop that puppy on there, and it will fit beautifully. And uh, that's what I did here. I found a piece of um, ribbon that was in my stash. Of course, it came off of some packaging somewhere. I do really like to reuse stuff. I have a pair of cheap scissors here because there's wiring in this ribbon and as I fold it in half to put the V's in the ribbon, I don't want it to wreck my good scissors. Now I'm taping this down in my stamp positioner and I've added a little B perfect positioner so that I can line things up and I'm also using just a scrap piece of paper um, as well to make sure that I have my stamp straight and this is the Dina Wakely um, handwritten sentiments uh, stamp again and I'm doing two lines sometimes when you try and add two stamps together they're going to bump into each other and make weird spacing and simple solution stamp one right after the other I'm doing this with my Versamark uh, black ink I had also added glossy accents to the flowers and then adhered that on the gold dotted card base Thank you for joining me. This is my first blog hop and also my first giveaway. And I have a few rules. I need you to subscribe if you like my channel, as well as leave a comment. If you want extra chances to win, leave more comments on my other videos. I'll count those as extra chances. My contest closes August 20th of 2019, and the winners will be announced on the YouTube video on this channel August 23rd of 2019. Winners must contact me. And online store chosen must be an established North American craft supplier that it, the gift cards will be awarded to each of two winners, first place being $50, second place being $25. Thank you so much for joining me, and I really appreciate your support. Hope you had fun, and see you soon.